Migrating your MySQL databases can be a huge pain, but with the data imports feature inside of PlanetScale, it just got a whole lot easier. Hey everyone, my name is James Quick and I'm a developer advocate here at PlanetScale. I'm really excited to share with you a hands-on tutorial with our data imports feature. But before we do that, I wanna talk about what the existing process might be for doing a database migration and some of the downsides that come along with it. So if you were to go and search right now for how to do a database migration, you'd probably see a list of similar steps. You have to take the dump of your data, you'd have to find the bin log position, and you'd have to start replication, none of which sounds very fun. Not to mention this is a very manual process. You're having to make the copies, you're having to then import the data, you're having to do all of that stuff yourself, but with the data imports feature inside of PlanetScale, it does it all for you seamlessly real time where you never have any downtime, so you're never losing any of your production time for your application or production data. It will real time copy over the data to the places that it needs to be, and then when you feel safe with moving to PlanetScale, you can break that connection and you have all of your data still working and existing inside of your planet scale database with your application never going down. So those are the highlights. I think the best thing to do now is go and see what this looks like hands on. All right, so as we get started, let's take a look at the setup that we have going. So we have our RDS database configured and created inside of the AWS console. It's planet scale imports. If we come over and look at this, I'm actually connected in the MySQL terminal here in the MySQL shell. Uh, to that database. And if you look at uh, the databases, we have planet scale underscore imports, and then we have a data table in here. Now, the other thing I want to show is I have two different scripts here. One is to show the count of records inside of a certain database. So you'll pass it a URL in the command that you run from the terminal to say which database to connect to. We'll start by connecting to AWS, uh, RDS database. And then there's also the right data here. So right data is going to uh, basically just get a random piece of data write that to the database so that we're continuing to uh, have some interactions going on in that database. So with those scripts in mind, let's tap over to this next set of terminal windows where we're going to have three different windows. The first one, and we'll go ahead and run this, is going to pass in uh, the database URL as that RDS database. So it's uh, going to do that and then uh, call the right data scripts. This is going to continue to write data to that table. In this next section, we're gonna do a show count on that same uh, database table. Uh, so we'll run this. It will query every second or a couple of seconds, I think, while the left side is writing every 200 milliseconds. So you see that number in the middle is going to continue to increase as we're continuing to write to the database, probably as you expect. So with all that stuff set up, we can actually go into Planet Scale and go ahead and get started with the import database. So inside of the dashboard, we'll go to new database and import. And then we'll need to copy our credentials over for that RDS database. So let's call this uh, RDS test import. And we'll need the host name, which is uh, this one. We'll need the database name, which is planet scale underscore imports. We've got our port there as well. Our uh, username is going to be admin. And then the password is going to be import db123. So let's see if we come down and try to connect. This should uh, should connect successfully, but what it's doing is testing and validating that this is a database that we can go ahead and actually do the import. So it's done validation, and we can start to begin this database import. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to uh, copy over all of that data from RDS into a brand new database in PlanetScale. Now while this is happening, we are continuing to write to that original RDS database. This means that we can continue to have our applications work as you would expect, have them run normally, and the replication is going on behind the scenes with no lost records. So all that is still happening, notice our writes and our reads are still working. We'll give this a second to finish this import and then we'll start to read from the planet scale side as well in replica mode. So we'll pause this for a second and come back when that is finished. All right, so that import has finished. And now that it has, what we can do is go ahead and start reading from this database as well. So we can come to the connect here. We can generate a new password. Now this is gonna be used for us as our connection string for that second reader. Uh, I've got a multiple clipboard history, so I'm gonna copy a few things to my history. So I'm gonna copy the database, the username, the host, and then the password, and we'll use that here in a second. So let me copy all of those pieces, make sure I get this whole thing. 
Let's go ahead and copy all of that. And then we'll come back and I've already kind of stubbed out what uh, this read is gonna look like. So we need to copy in all those pieces. So uh, this format, uh, by the way, is in our documentation for connecting a Node.js app. You can see that right here. So that's the format that we're following. So for username, I'm going to uh, delete that part and then copy in the username, which is this piece. And then we have colon and then our plain text password. So this will be a pretty long one. So let's go ahead and copy that part in. So it'll be this one. Then we have our access host URL. So we'll copy in the host like so. All right. And then lastly, we'll have our database name. And that's rds-test-import. And then we have SSL equals true. All right, so we'll go ahead and run this and we should be able to now see that we're querying records both on RDS and in PlanetScale directly. So what's cool about this is we are still writing to RDS, but PlanetScale is now replicating those writes over to our PlanetScale database. You can see those are not quite exactly in sync, but they're both increasing at the same rate. Their polling cycle is just slightly off. Now what we can do is I'm gonna uh, close this query and then uh, go back up and I'm gonna copy this entire connection string here. So I'm gonna copy everything inside of these quotes and copy that to my clipboard. Then I'll rerun this listener. All right, so that's listening again. And I'm gonna quit the writer. So what's really cool now is I'm gonna go in and get rid of all of the parts of the database URL. So instead of writing directly to RDS, I'm gonna have this write to planet scale. So I think this needs the quote there. We'll paste this in and have that one. So now we should be telling it to write to planet scale, but actually what planet scale is going to do in replica mode is it's going to write directly to RDS and then replicate that stuff to our planet scale database. And to do this, we want to make sure that this is not the show count, but this is the write data function. So uh, now we're starting to write data and notice that these queries now should start to show those new records. So they were kind of in line while we weren't writing. Now we're actually writing these records and you can see that they're querying and increasing on both sides. So that's in replica mode where we've told our writer to write to planet scale, but actually planet scale is going to write directly to RDS and then replicate that to planet scale. So after you've done that and you've tested it out, then you can enable primary mode for planet scale where it's going to write directly to planet scale and then replicate that data over to RDS. So now with this in primary mode, we didn't change any scripts. It's still writing the same way it was before where it's targeting planet scale, but now planet scale is going to during this primary mode, it's going to write directly to planet scale and then replicate over to RDS. So those two records are now completely in sync. You can see the polling cycle is still slightly off, but they're increasing at the same rate. But watch what happens when we finish this import. After we finish this import, it's going to now disconnect from RDS completely. And what we'll see is we will still write with the exact same script, but the, the query in the middle will stay at the exact same amount of records, while planet scale query on the right is going to continue to increase this because we are still writing there. So the couple of different steps that we have in here, we do our import to get our data into planet scale. All the while we're writing to RDS and everything's being replicated appropriately. Then in replica mode, we change to write to planet scale. Well, planet scale is actually going to take that info and write it to RDS and replicate to planet scale. And then we convert to primary mode. Don't change any of our scripts or any of our logic. Now it's writing directly to planet scale while it's replicating to RDS. And then when we're finished, it disconnects and you've got all your data safely inside of planet scale using the data import feature. Hopefully you found that tutorial not only interesting, but also very practical and useful as you potentially look to do database migrations. We encourage you to give PlanetScale a try using the link in the description below. In the meantime, if you have any questions or feature requests that you would like to see, let us know in the comments as well. Thanks for checking out the video and we'll see you next time. You'd have to uh, stop your production app. You'd have to make a dump or a copy of your data. You would then import that data into the new database and then restart everything. Now, the obvious downside here is that your production application would have to stop for a certain amount of time as you do the dump. And then before you import the data into the new database and get it up and running. That's a significant hit if you have a business that never stops.